Hello everybody, welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club, the most popular gyrocopter resource channel on YouTube. Subscribe and select alerts for updates on the channel's content. In this film we look at returning to flight, particularly after the coronavirus, and highlight some fundamentals that I hope help keep you all safe. The channel is of course a global resource, and so you'll need to factor in your own local flying procedures and restrictions, and this film is also not a catch-all. But before we fly, we need to pause for thought on the significant risk of accident when a pilot low on currency, or is unfamiliar with his environment, get airborne. When returning to flying, do consider that the primary element in fatal accidents are human factors, within which 75% are due to suboptimal decision making, and 25% a deficiency in skill. Good decision making is affected by capability and workload, Training, practice and planning are all essential to improving capability and reducing workload, giving you the maximum capacity to conduct a safe flight. In normal circumstance, the usual remedy is to kick off with an instructor flight, but social distancing restrictions may mean for some that isn't possible. But if you're in doubt, then delay your return to flying until a trip with an instructor is possible. Never blunder on. So let's look at the factors affecting the pilot and the aircraft with particular focus on safety and legality. Don't let this be you. The currency barometer of the British Gliding Association is an effective way of assessing your own situation. Draw a line between the hours flown and takeoffs in the last year and where it crosses the white line that provides your status. Links to all of these for hard copies can be found in the description. Next, assess your fitness to fly, and given the virus outbreak, I suppose illness is in the forefront of most people's mind. But don't ignore more subtle factors, particularly stress. Now think about your legality to fly. Think about the validity of your license, medical, and if you intend to carry a passenger, if your currency allows it, or if indeed you should. Now look at the aircraft, and with the unplanned long break, do ensure the airworthiness condition of your aircraft and ensure the status of permits and insurance. Of course, the other fundamentals still apply, and perhaps given the long break, pay particular attention to the condition of fuel. Is there any water contamination, for example? Remember the usual discipline around pre-flight planning, and here's a guide, although I suggest making early flights conservative, particularly in terms of navigation and weather. Finally, review the flight using threat and error management. And remember, the management part is important because there's no point identifying problems and then doing nothing about them. The threats, of course, are outside of our control but nevertheless affect the safety of our flight, while the errors are just that, they're mistakes. Consider your return to flying after the long break and all of the usual snags are still waiting. So take off performance considerations and when to abort the takeoff that still applies, and certainly you'll be rusty in engine failures after takeoff. So refresh your mind with where you'll be going if the motor quits in the climb out. It's as likely to happen on your first flight back as it was had your flying continued as normal. This film was prepared with material from the General Aviation Safety Council, GASCO. They're a continual source of good advice. Find links to them and other resources in the description. Enjoy your first flight back and fly safely.